Welcome back to the Backend Masterclass. In the last lecture, we've learned how to design a database schema with dbdiagram.io. Today, we will learn how to install Docker Desktop on local machine, then download and start a PostgreSQL container. We will also learn how to set up and use Table Plus to connect and interact with Postgres, and use it to run the SQL script that we've generated in the previous lecture to create our Simple Banks database schema. All right. Let's start by installing Docker. On a Mac, it's super easy. We just need to search for Docker Desktop. Then open this Docker website and click Download. After the installer is downloaded, we open it and drag Docker into the Applications folder. And that's it. Docker Desktop is successfully installed. Let's click on this icon to run it. It will take a while for Docker Desktop to start. You can see its status by clicking on this icon. Right now, it's a yellow circle, which means Docker Desktop is still starting. When the circle turns green, we know that Docker Desktop is started and ready to be used. Now let's open the terminal and try it. We use docker ps command to list all running containers. At the moment, it's an empty list because we haven't run any containers yet. Let's try docker images to list all available docker images. It's also empty for now. So let's learn how to pull the first image. In this course, we will use PostgreSQL as a database engine for our app. So let's go to hub.docker.com to search for its image. There are several results, but we're going to use the first one because it is the official Postgres image. As you can see here, we can simply run docker pull postgres to get this image. This will pull the image with the latest tag. In this case, it is version 12. There are many other versions with different tags as well. I often use the rpid image since its size is very small, thanks to the lightweight rpid Linux distribution. So let's open the terminal and run docker pull postgres 12 rpid. The general syntax to pull an image is docker pull, image name, colon, and tag. We use a colon to separate the image name and its tag or version. You can apply it to download any other images of any version you want. Alright, the image is successfully downloaded. Now if we run docker images, we can see the Postgres image right here. Its tag is 12 rpine. It's also assigned a unique image ID. And look at the size of this image. It's just around 150 megabytes, pretty small. Okay, so now we have the Postgres image. Let's learn how to run it to start a Postgres database server container. We use the docker run command for this purpose. Here's the syntax. Start with docker run. Then we use the name flag to specify the name of the container. The E flag is used to set environment variable for the container. In this case, we can set the password to connect to Postgres. Then the D flag is used to tell Docker to run this container in background or detect mode. Finally, the last argument is the name of the image, Postgres. If you're new to Docker, it's important to distinguish two terms, image and container. Basically, a container is one instance of the application contained in the image which is started by the docker run command. We can start multiple containers from one single image. We can also customize the container by changing some of its environment variables. For example, with the Postgres user variable, we can set the username of the super user to log into Postgres. If this is not specified, the default username Postgres will be used. Similarly, the Postgres DB variable allows us to set the default database name, which will be created when the container starts. Otherwise, the default database name will be the same as Postgres user. All right, now let's copy this command and paste it to the terminal. Now let's change the image name to Postgres 12 Alpine because we want to run this specific version of Postgres. For the password, I'm just going to use secret to be simple. Then let's set the super username to root with this Postgres user environment variable. 
Now the name of the container. I'm going to use Postgres 12. Finally, one important argument we must add to this command is a port mapping. What does that mean? Well, basically a Docker container is run in a separate virtual network, which is different from the host network that we are on. So we cannot simply connect to the Postgres server running on port 5432 of the container network unless we tell Docker to create one kind of bridge between our local host network and the container's network. We do that by using the p flag, then specify the port of the host network, followed by a colon, then the corresponding port of the container. They don't necessarily be the same, but I often use the same port to make it easier to remember. Now when we press enter, Docker will start the Postgres container and return its long unique ID. We can list all running containers with docker ps command. As you can see here, this container ID is a short prefix of the long one that docker returned in the previous command. Then the image name, postgres with tag trail alpine. If we run docker images, we can see it's the same image that we've pulled before with the docker pull command. There are several more information, such as the created time of the container or the status of the container. And the port mapping, as we might expect, is mapping port 5432 on localhost to the same port in the container. And finally, the name of the container, which is Postgres 12, as we said in the docker run command. Okay, now the Postgres server is ready. Let's try to connect to it and access its console. We can do that with the docker exec command. It allows us to run one specific command inside a running container. We use the IT flag to tell Docker to run the command as an interactive TTI session. Then we specify the name of the container, which is Postgres 12. And finally, the command we want to run inside Postgres 12. In this case, we would like to run the PSQL command to access the Postgres console. And we use a U flag here to tell PSQL that we want to connect with the root user. And voila, we are now inside the Postgres console. One thing you might notice here is Postgres doesn't ask for password, although we've set it when running the container. It's because by default, the Postgres container sets up a trust authentication locally, so password is not required when connecting from localhost. Okay, now we can try a simple query, such as select now to get the current time. It works. Let's quit the console by backslash Q enter. One more thing I want to show you here is to display the logs of the container. We use the docker logs command followed by the name of the container. You can use the unique ID of the container as well. But for me, I prefer the name because it's easier to remember. Okay, here's the log of the Postgres trial container. With this, we can easily check what happens inside the apps container. Alright, so now you know how to use some basic Docker commands to interact with the Postgres container and access its console to run SQL queries. Now I'm going to show you another easy way to manage and play around with the database using Table Plus. Table Plus is a GUI tool that can talk to many different kind of database engines. It's very easy to use and will help us a lot in speeding up development. Let's click this button to download it. Then open the installer and drag table plus to the applications folder. Now let's open the app. There are no DB connection yet, so let's create a new one. There are many database engine options, but in our case, we use PostgreSQL. Now we enter the name of the connection. I'm going to call it Postgres 12. The host is localhost and the port is 5432 by default. The username is root and the password is secret as we configured when running the Postgres container. The default database name is root, same as the username, since we didn't explicitly configure it when starting the container. Okay, let's click test to test the connection. All green. So now we can click connect to connect to the database server. Everything is empty at the moment because we haven't created the schema yet. But we can still run some queries by clicking on this SQL icon. 
Let's try select now and click run current button or simply press command enter. The result will show up in the below section. Now let's open the simple bank SQL file that we've generated in the previous lecture. Then select all queries in this file and press command enter to run them. All successful. Now when we press command R to refresh, three tables will show up on the left, account, entries and transfers. We can click on their names to see the data or select the structure tab to see their schema structure. There are a lot of useful information, such as the column name, data type, default value, foreign key, is nullable or not. Looks like some foreign key columns are now nullable, which is not really what we want, because every entry or transfer must link to their account. So let's go to dbdiagram.io to fix this. I'm gonna add not now constraint to the account ID column of entries table. And the from account ID and to account ID columns of transfers table. Then export to PostgreSQL. Now let's remove the old file and change the name of this new file. Then open it with table plus. All right, now we can see the not now constraint for the four range keys. I'm gonna select all these three tables. Right click and choose delete. Choose cascade to make sure all reference data will be deleted. Then click OK. Now you can see the tables are still there, but they are marked in red. If we press Command S to save this state, the delete table command will be executed and all tables will be gone. OK, now let's select all queries in this new schema SQL file and run them. Refresh. Three tables show up again. But this time, all columns are not nullable. That's exactly what we wanted. We can also see the comment for the amount columns that we've written in the schema definition script. Awesome. And that's it for today's lecture. I hope you find it interesting and useful. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.